Hello my friends and welcome back. We are in Paris still and I found a beautiful area here with very narrow streets, beautiful to look at. Restaurants, shops, narrow streets and this is at the corner of Rue du Petit Pont, the street of the small uh, uh, bridge. And this is Rue saint Severin, Severin, whatever you want to call it. Right here is a beautiful church. And on the other side is the Isle of the City where Notre Dame de Paris is. So I'm going to take it this way. And it's a beautiful, um, uh, beautiful little, little streets. You can't go with a car around here. I'm going to walk you through and I'm going to discuss uh, one subject today. And that one subject, look at those. Uh, one subject is going to be the goal, I thought for some time that the goal was just the goal to destroy our civilization, our culture, is just uh, a certain group uh, disliking us so much uh, obviously, uh, that, you know, tries to uh, destroy it uh, when you're envious. And uh, that's what you do. You destroy competition and uh, for the sake of destroying it. That's um, one of the aspects of what's going on when you see garbage on the television, you see this diversity, so-called inclusion and uh, open-mindedness and all that being around. I, um, that's one aspect. It's, it's not only one avenue. Uh, another one, which is, I think, the main one at this point, is the one that um, is about control. Who's in charge and the, the way you control people in general, not necessarily you know, one kind of people but people in general, is by having them um, descend to a retardation uh, level through an education that you tell them is fantastic when actually is garbage. And they will really believe that uh, that education they get is, um, is important and it's really of value. So that is uh, pretending that the new education, the one with diversity, inclusion, equity, uh, uh, diversity is our strength. Uh, if you're not open-minded, if you don't agree with any perversity they push on you, you're not an open-minded, you're not a sophisticated individual. So this is uh, how things are. And uh, the, how you do that? Endobitocest o societate. That means you get a society to be imbecilic. We're going to go that way. And we're going to go to the Union Square, which is that way. Let's look here, very narrow, and a lot of people, restaurants. So, in order to, uh, to control a society, regardless if society is French, American, Romanian, Hungarian, you have to make sure that society is low IQ. Therefore, and make them, make them be, to a certain extent, um, feel happy with what they have and um, it seems like that's the way we go um, allow them to drink allow them to uh, take drugs allow them to do all that and um, you keep them in a state of not consciousness let's put it this way uh, the goal is unfortunately that a group of people uh, who are overrepresented in the in the positions of power besides the fact that they hate our culture and our civilization, uh, they will take over us little by little with their uh, financial system, which uh, w <laughs> makes us nowadays all dependent, uh, dependent on. So um, it's not about only, you know, let's say the French hate the Germans or uh, let's say the Hungarians uh, hate the Romanians and vice versa. No, it's not that. It's not about these kind of groups. It's about a foreign group, not a European group, in charge of all this. And not only, not only, it's basically, I have to agree with Karl Marx, uh, the Jewish uh, son of a rabbi. That's reality. Uh, and he, um, you know, it's a, a class warfare. The problem is we don't have the weapons or they try to dis disarm us of our weapons, which is the ability not only to think, the ability to have a certain kind of understanding of, situ of the situation. And they brainwash us in believing that things that actually work against us uh, are in 
our advantage, which they're not. But it's not hard to do it if you have a lot of traitors uh, who cooperate and then after a while, you know, with um, generations, even people that were not traitors, that were, they will really believe that what is fed to them, it's really of value. Therefore, they will participate willingly. What's up, buddy? They will participate willingly, believing that all this garbage they were fed by the, um, how do you call it, uh, Frankfurt School, for instance, uh, is, uh, is of value. And in the 1960s in France, obviously, and then they moved to the United States of America because the guy with the mustache uh, was a bad dude, obviously. So uh, you can see who's who and what's what. So remember, it's about being in charge, regardless who you are, regardless. And how do you do that? In the meantime, you destroy the fabric of a society. Uh, you make certain things as a value that actually are not beneficial to a society. Diversity is not beneficial to a society, not at all. I'm going to give you a very, very, very easy example. Have, I don't know, about 10 workers. What's going on here? 10 workers, I thought there were not cars around. 10 workers work on a, building a house, but none of them speak. I'm pula mea, tem pula mea, Brazil. Uh, not speaking the same language, not having the same customs, not having the same work ethics, have them work on the house, build the house. Do you think they will all show up at the same time? Do you think they will follow the same ethics? Do you think they will work as hard? As they will have the same... No, they will not. And how, how will, you, will you make them work? You have to have a center office. And that central office is? Who? Who's that center office? So then you have the diversity. Actually, they have to somehow uh, uh, be organized by a group of people. And then maybe it works somehow. Somehow it works. And in the meantime, if uh, they lose a few generations, they don't care. So no, I don't think uh, diversity is our strength. Diversity of thought? Yes, I agree with that. But I don't think that the racial diversity uh, is necessary in a society for the society to succeed, especially when they uh, foment um, hatred among groups. Why? So they can control us. Um, remember, these kind of things are taught in our schools to our children. Our children will uh, grow into becoming adults. When they become adults, they will get you know, positions of power, some of them, and they will push the same things that they were fed since childhood into believing that, that those are values, values, values. Why would I want to be diverse? What? Diversity of what? Of cultures? Well, if you bring them all in one society, definitely you're going to have uh, uh, tensions. And not only because it's, it's um, how do you call it, a um, police behind me. <laughs> it's, um, it's competition for resources. And if you are an organized group, as the guys who are in charge of us, then they will succeed. That's a, it's, it's not only me saying that. You'll check into a cultural anthropology and you're going to find out. And not only, as an example. The problem is they want us to have no, uh, how should I put it, uh, no anchor to our societies to accept everybody else and eventually we're going to have a mishmash eventually we're going to have a mishmash they're going to, going to call it culture so from on the uh, a pluribum unum right from many one the same thing from many is going to become one what why do i want to become one if i become one that means i'm not going to be diverse anymore i mean once i uh, hey how's up so remember if we change diversity into what? Bring everybody in. Eventually, they will form a society with a certain kind of culture. So again, from many, you're going to create one culture. So where is the diversity? For instance, look at, the, look at for instance, at soccer or the Olympics. Now that we are in Paris, the Olympics. I don't want to see, I don't know, let's say uh, Romanians being 50% of them, let's say, of Asian origin. That's not Romanians. They play for Romania, but they're not Romanians. I want to see the Romanian team playing the French team and not an African team. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. So when I want to see, uh, um, how do you call it, um, competition, I want to see Romania playing against Hungary. Not like, for instance, Manchester United playing Aston Villa. Those are not English teams. Those are multi-something teams. They're not English teams. So when they play and they win, when Manchester United, let's say, wins, uh, I don't know, a 
Champions League. It's not an English team. It's a corporation, international corporation, that owns that club and hires all kind of mercenaries from all the cultures. So that's not English team. That's not. And when you look at the, uh, let's say, uh, the best example, the French, uh, Allez le Bleu, uh, all right, in French, those are, what, what are they? They are French? If I look at them, they're not French to me. So why would I want to look at that one? Because at, with diversity, you're going to have the, let's say, the soccer team of Romania becoming a mishmash. You're going to have Hungarians, French, uh, I don't know, uh, Zimbabweans, uh, Chinese, who knows, uh, whatever. So that's not going to be the team of Romania. It's going to be, the name will be Romania, but the people will not be. So I'm not going to root for that. For, that's not going to be Romania. There's going to be some people playing for one country. Do you want that? I don't want that. Then why would... Full of these imbeciles all around, like they're in a hurry, something happens, nothing happens. But anyway, how do I know? I walk these streets many, many times and I saw these guys. Direct experience. They say, I mean, you're not everywhere uh, at the same time. It's true. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just irritating with this. Every day, night, they are going like they're in emergencies. Maybe they are, screw them. So I, I want to see tribes against tribes. That's, how I, that's the whole purpose. When you go to the Olympics, you want to see a nation. I looked at the, the team of, uh, what was that team? I can't remember, was it? It was like half, it was a Nordic country, represented by non-Nordic people. Those are not the ones I want to see. I want those people that are not from, uh, from that country represent their country. Now, remember, United States of America, Australia, Canada, is a little bit different. They were formed by, right, as colonies, by uh, uh, British. The British in, right, in the uh, 17th century, 16th century, they were clearly of a certain kind of stock, clearly. Look at the Constitution, look at the Declaration of Independence. That was a country formed for a certain kind of people. With time, they were fooled in the, what, in the 20th century by that group to accept, oh, actually, it's a country of immigrants. Everybody come in. <coughs> no, no, no. Uh, come in but it should be a limit it should be bring people of value in not a number and um, this is my uh, my latest how should I put it um, conclusion we are we we are deluded with the goal of not being together and eventually we will not have like they try to change it now in as my cousin said about the French people and French nation. France is an idea. Or United States is an idea. No, it's not. It's a nation. So it, they, they, they switch. Look at this. When these politicians with the mass media, with all this garbage, talk about America, they say, America is an idea. idea. It's not a nation. It is a nation, not an idea. All right? It is an idea, but they want to switch it like this. Make it from, switch it from being together, united in one. No, we're not. An, we're, it's an idea. Why? Money is our idea. Freedom is our idea. Yes, there is. But remember, it was not built just like that. It was clear who could have rights and who formed this and for whom. Nevertheless, my friends, uh, <coughs> I think this, um, this trend, this fight is ir irreversible in, uh, in Europe, in the Western Europe, in United States of America and Canada and Australia. They already, the group, succeeded in deluding us enough to, uh, to, have the, to have us not our flavor anymore, our culture. And you're going to watch next to, I don't know, Germany being all French and the French being all Germans. I don't want to see that. Why? The beauty of meeting a guy from Zimbabwe is to see a guy from Zimbabwe, a Zimbabwe, not a Romanian who was, I don't know, five generations living in Zimbabwe. That's not a Zimbabwean, it's a Romanian living in Zimbabwe and maybe having the same culture, but <clears throat> you know what I mean? Not even that, because they ask us to have the same culture, to keep our cultures. So let's say I go to, to United States of America, and all of a sudden I keep my Romanian heritage over there. Really? Why don't I f***ing stay to Romania? Because it's an idea. No, it's not. It's a people. All right, my friends. Uh, the last shot here in the Union Square. Uh, and here is not that garbage over there, but beautiful street beautiful street over there 
by the way, this is going to become a museum in Paris where I'm at right now. Because the people who will take over, the people who will take over, they will, uh, they will um, change it. They don't understand it, they don't like it, they don't feel it. But hey, they will be French. This is going to become a museum and they say, hey, we want to go to Paris? And this is going to be a different Paris. Uh, the Paris that uh, is going to be of low value, lower value and of quality. That as generations will pass, this is what they're going to do. They're going to get used to it and they will forget that Paris was something else. Why? Because the guys in charge of us will not let them know it was something else. Why? So they can't compare and contrast. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.